Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri, and you loved our next guest on shows like Without a Trace and Unforgettable. And now you can see Poppy Montgomery in the brand new surf and crime show, Reef Break, where she plays Cat Chambers, a former thief and professional surfer now working as a fixer for the government of a small island. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Well, the theory has been floated to me once or twice. She was a criminal they could never catch. I was accused, never convicted. Now, she's the one. I think I'm going to enjoy getting to know you. Most people do. The cops need the most. Kidnapping, a stolen yacht, and secret videos. Oh, yeah. Mommy. Poppy Montgomery stars. All in a day's work. Everybody, please welcome Poppy Montgomery. Yay. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having uh, me. I have a feeling that this show was sort of tailored for you, or that someone was like, "We've got a real Poppy Montgomery role here." Is that true? Um, I actually created the. You show. You created the show. Well, I, oh, there you go. I came up with the idea of the show, and then we had a writer, Ken Senzel, who created the actual script and show but yes it started with an idea that I had um you know I I'm always playing cops and I'm really much more of a criminal <laughs> in my heart and so I was like let's start there a good natured criminal I am a I mean I listen I was expelled from you know seven schools so or six schools I keep forgetting how can many. I ask for 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 what there was nothing in particular that that really stood out to me <laughs> I'm not really entirely sure to this day why. I was kind of a loud mouth and I was outspoken and they were all girls schools and I think they expected us to toe the line. It was a different era. It certainly wasn't an era where women were as empowered as they are now. Right. So um, that probably had something to do with it. This was in Australia, yes, right? Yes, yeah. in Sydney. Instead. Yeah, so you you basically left high school and moved to the moved to the states. Is that true? I dropped out of high school at fourteen, wow. and I moved at seventeen to America. To Florida, right? I went to Florida to see a boyfriend that lasted about two days, and then I got on a Greyhound bus and I went to L.A. I read that in your Wikipedia. I'm curious, how did you know in two days that this is just like, what am I doing? I got to get out of here. You know. When you date someone and then you go back a couple years later and you think that you see it with whole different eyes when you're 17 as you did when you were 15. I mean, it was all very young. But I just was like, yeah, n no, n no. And you got on a Greyhound and you went to L.A.? Mm -hmm. Did you know that you wanted to act, that you wanted to be an actress? Oh, yeah, definitely. I didn't know how I was going to do it or how it was going to work, but I but I just was determined. How did it work? You get, you get off the bus. I mean, this is a cliche. You get off the bus in L.A. and you're like, I'm going to be a star. Y pretty much. I did. I actually I bought a book called How to Make It in Hollywood at Samuel French Bookstore. And I read about a manager, Bob McGowan. He's still a manager today. He was my first manager. And he was Julia Roberts' manager at the time. And she was the biggest you know, star in the world. And I was like, oh, I should call him. So I called him, and he ended up being my first manager. Um, and I don't really know why he agreed to take me on. I had like a thick Australian accent, and I'd never really done anything. Um, and then you ever I walk around LA just telling this story to other struggling actresses just to watch their hearts melt <laughs> and watch them yeah, get like, angry? Just buy this book, How to Make It in Hollywood. It'll totally change your life. How did you mean? I just got off the bus, got a book, got a manager, whatever. I mean, pretty much it was rare. It, it, I mean, I called other people who hung up and said, and I sort of stalked some where I was like, it was too, I called a lot. I was like, I really think you should reconsider not wanting to meet with me. And they're like, yeah, see, yeah, click. But Bob McGowan just kind of liked my chutzpah, as they say, and and he became a manager, and I introduced me to agents. And did you have any acting experience? Um, well, I had been like guard number two in a touring version of Twelfth Night in Australia, so I had Shakespeare experience. I did. That'll get you in the door. <laughs> I was very familiar with the play. Uh, and I had a line, it was no sir, no jot. That was my line. Um, outside of that, I really did not have any experience. But I, I, I felt like I was going to be a good actor. Because <laughs> <laughs> you had personality. Definitely. And yeah. I did go to acting school. I went to ATYP, the Australian <laughs> Theatre for Young People. Um, I sort of got kicked out of there too. But before I did, I learned a lot. Do you know what you got kicked out of there for? I was disruptive, is the word. Right. You know. Born star. Talked in class a lot, didn't listen, disagreed most of the time. Um, so 
yeah, no, I didn't really have much experience at all. And then I kind of built my experience by actually acting. So you build your experience by actually acting. What is it like when you get a show like Without a Trace? Without a Trace um, was amazing. I never expected it to be seven years. Before that, I, w I think I was coming right off of playing Marilyn Monroe, where I had done this big miniseries called Blonde um, with amazing actors. It was, you know, Griffin Dunn and Patrick Dempsey and um, Kirstie Alley. And I mean, the list went on and on of Jensen Ackles. And it, so that was like a, the first big thing I'd ever been sort of critically acclaimed for. And then they offered me Without a Trace very quickly after that. And I didn't really understand series television at that time. So I didn't realize that when you do a pilot, you sign up for seven years. And if that show goes, you're, it's like the old studio system, like you're under contract. Um, and I loved that show, so I was happy to be under contract, but I didn't really ever think it would become... Yeah, it 22 episodes a season, right? We actually did 24. 24, so you're working f pretty much the whole year yeah. on the show. Yeah. Maybe you get a month or, like a month or Couple two off. A couple months down, right. And then normally we're promoting at that time. But that was an amazing experience for me, and we were very close cast, and you know, I'm still dear friends with everyone from that show. And, you know, you get on a show like that, you start playing, uh, were you a cop on that show? Forgive me. Yes, FBI. Yeah. FBI. I don't know how I kept getting cast as law enforcement officials when I was the, I was literally like one step away from being arrested most of the time. I'm like, oh, I'm a cop or a doctor. I'm always playing like intelligent people, educated people. <laughs> and I was like, I dropped out of school at 14. I got expelled. I'm... Really, I got into a lot of trouble, and somehow I'm either upholding the law or like operating on somebody's brain. I was like, "This is, this is an extraordinary." Why do you career. think that is? I don't know. Right. Maybe I just seem smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just come off as like you know more educated than I am. Um, I don't know, but outside of Marilyn Monroe, yeah, I've always I played J.K. Rowling. I've played a lot of really brilliant people. Um, who are far more educated than, than I am. So when you came up with the concept for Reef Break, it really was like, okay, they like me as a cop, so maybe I can do a version of that, but that's more, close to, more closer to home? Right, so it, this is the first show under my production company, Wild Poppy. It's under the banner of my production company. And I wanted to do a show that I thought would get on the air as my first outing into producing. Um, that was within a genre of course. that my audience understood. But it's also kind of a nod to shows that I kind of loved. You know, Miami Vice, Magnum P.I. It's a very blue skies, oh, yeah. sunny, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, it's got a, like a, a, a dash of Baywatch in it. You know, I love all those shows. And so I wanted to do something that was blue skies like that because I, I don't think there's anything on TV right now that's that's like that and I also like that the plots of each episode in some ways are um I don't want to use the word throwaway but they're so big yeah and the next episode we're just starting over it's an old school television it show is. in that way which I I genuinely miss I don't I, everyone wants to be too serialized I think yeah and it's you know the fun part of this show is that like the crimes the the, the island is made up the reef is it looks real but it's not so we can kind of do anything we want it's got a romancing the stone element that way where it's like pirates and and kidnappings and sunken treasure and oil refineries that have been sabotaged there's not you know so fun to write it's so fun and it's so fun to actually like do it you know to do all the stunts and yachts blowing up and and all of it's real most of our water work all of our water work is real. We, we don't use green screen. So we're always out on locations across Australia filming. But um, we didn't want to do crimes like Without a Trace and Unforgettable where it was so dark. You know, those, those storylines could get pretty intense, like missing children and killed teenagers and it starts to get kind of heavy well you can have like lighted light-hearted affairs in between those s searching for the criminal behind those yeah and my character literally like magnum pi style she just has a new lover every week i was like that's awesome so we'll just throw that in there because the guys always get to do it so she should and i get to surf and i get to ride jet skis really really get, fast do you since you created the show do you have a hand in choosing the who plays your lover every week i do <laughs> I mean, everyone like everyone's probably like ooh, but like for year, decades and decades, 
male leads had a hand in choosing oh, yeah. that for a no, long No, I time. definitely have a hand in, in casting across the board, not just my, my husband somewhere in the back in the audience. He's like, are you choosing them yourself? I'm like, no, baby, no. Um, right. No, not at all. Yeah, t take that. Yeah, that's mm. good. That's good. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> um, I'm involved in all casting and in, in pretty much every aspect of the show. And now you were telling me just before uh, we started talking on camera that uh, you did surf prior to this, but you had to relearn how to surf basically for the show? Yeah, so I surfed not very well, but I surfed as a um, teenager. And I always wanted to be really good and I love Point Break, the movie Point Break, the original. Best. Yeah, hence our title, Reef Break. It's literally a nod to everything I ever loved. I was like, ooh, and then there's Point Break, a surfing criminal, I'll be Patrick Swayze. So I, I did surf, but I'm kind of a not very good surfer. So uh, when I went back to relearn just recently, I, I, I got okay again, but I'm not allowed to do any of the actual riding the waves in case I smash my face and then the whole production goes down. So very People don't realize it's very easy to smash your face. Oh, it's very easy. The one time I tried to learn to surf, I smashed my face. Of course, was, you, everyone does. Yeah. And the board comes up, you go, hey, uh, board, yeah, and you like, get hit in the face. Right, I got a black eye from that. It, it's, um, it's actually, to be good at surfing is, is such an art. And my stunt double, Angie, is... She's got like a one-year-old baby and she tears up on these waves, huge waves. I want to be her, but that's not me. I paddle really well. I'm a good paddler. When you pitched the show and it got picked up, were you like, that's amazing. I just pitched you guys a beach show. I get to be on the beach now for like most of for the like year. For like seven months. Yeah. yeah, I was amazed that we went straight to series without a pilot. I was amazed that the first show I went out with became, you know, a straight to series um, show it's been it's been a wild ride I mean it, it's a lot because as an actor when you go to work you, you don't realize and I never realized how much has gone into getting that show just to start rolling oh my, yeah. you know it's like a miracle that it ever makes it to air and you go over hurdle after hurdle after hurdle and every day you think that show is going to fall apart until those cameras roll I was like it's never, it's, we're going to fall apart we're going to fall apart we're going to fall apart um, and you have to have the stamina to go through that. Fall apart. You're talking about before you get on before set. Before you get on. You're talking about like getting what? the green light from this person and this person, the money from these people. And, and even people. then when you have it and you're down in Australia, before you roll cameras, shows can still fall apart. Like they just can pull the plug and you just, all the scripts and everything, go. you don't do it. Happens have all you the ever time. had that happen on a show that you were on? No, because by the time by I the get, time there, get there, they're yeah, rolling cameras. Like... But I have, ex I think I have about 30 million gray hairs that I had to dye to come on this <laughs> this stage today because I the stress of that of getting these shows made it's it's overwhelming and there are so many moving pieces and um, development. You know, finding the script, making sure it's right, the idea being executed properly there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into it did you enjoy being a part of that process at this point i mean now this is your first first outing with your production company i imagine you are a bit more involved in that process in the in the development phase did you enjoy it yeah i found it yes i did enjoy it i learned a lot partially it, it, it's you know what it's very it's a big job mm -hmm. being i didn't realize how big of a job it is but it is it and but once the show happens and it's realized it's all worth it so, um, yeah, I love producing. I love being involved at the development stage and pushing and going into the rooms and pitching and selling it, and, which is what I did with this. Um, and I think, you know, I have other shows in development now, too, that I wouldn't necessarily act in that I, that I would just produce. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for a couple questions from the audience. Who has a question? Right here. Hi. Hi, my name is Marissa. Hi. I'm a fan of you. Like, I watch all episodes of Without a Trace. Uh -huh. And I want to know how you feel after some years playing uh, FBI agent. How do you feel to be the another side when you finish the first day of the Reef Break? What's your emotion on that day? Oh, I, fe I felt very emotional that day. I felt like we had, I had climbed Mount Everest. I couldn't believe we had gotten it done. And playing a criminal is so much more fun because I don't have to wear suits and I don't have to abide by the rules. And I suddenly was so free on the show. I get, there's one scene where I'm running down a beach and 
you know, I jump onto a jet ski and I take off and the boat flies through the air and I was like, this is awesome. And basically I get to wear, you know, bare feet and sundresses all day long, which is way more comfortable than police suits. So I was very, very happy. It was, a, it was an amazing day. Uh, one more. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering what uh, the most memorable, memorable day on set was. We've had quite a few. Um, we had a number where we were out in the water and it was suddenly blue skies and we were, you know, oh, this is great and we're paddling along and then a storm just rolls in and I was like, oh my God, we're going to die. <laughs> like literally, like I was like, uh, guys. And in Australia, they're like, oh, mate, don't worry, you're right, you're right. It'll, it's just a squall. And I was like, okay, but I'm out here in a wetsuit on a surfboard. That day was pretty memorable. The other day we had one where, um, I'm, I, I, there's a clip of it somewhere, but I'm driving a rescue boat, with, it's attached to a jet ski. And I was just so excited and the cameraman's on the front of the boat filming me. <laughs> and I went way too fast and I literally caught air, like the boat shot up over a wave into the air. And I was like, I think I just killed the whole camera department. I'm so sorry. And I, I didn't realize the power and the speed of those boats. So we had a lot of water incidents that I would, I could write a book about some of them, but it was really fun. It was just, Intense. You can't control the ocean. Did you I go learned. from a person who like wanted to do their own stunts to being like, no, 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 no. It's okay. I get it. Have, have oh them no, do all my stunts. No, I've gotten worse. Now I want to be a stunt person. <laughs> I literally said to my Angie, my stunt double, I was like, you. I'm just really your acting double. Basically, she, all of the stuff she does on those waves. I mean, I'm in awe. I would love to be able to do that, and I really want to learn. Um, it's unlikely that I will ever become that good of a surfer at this point in my existence, but I, I am determined to keep trying. Uh, Poppy, the show is an incredible amount of fun. Congratulations Thank on your first you. outing as a producer and a Thank wonderful you. show as an actress. It's on ABC Thursdays at 10, correct? Yep. yep. Uh, it's called Reef Break. Everybody give Poppy Montgomery a huge round of applause for being here. Let's hear it. Thank you.